And politically, the U.S. now feels it has a reliable ally. A military council takes power in mid-65. There's a new prime minister, Air Marshal Nguyen Cao Ki. Premier Ki is a tough, flamboyant figure. He heads the 10th government in 20 months. The U.S. military commander, General Westmoreland. Ki was, uh, had a lot of charisma. Uh, he, uh, he had a flair. And uh, he was well liked by the, the troops and very, liked, very well liked by the Vietnamese. Uh, he was uh, a man of action. He was, uh, he was swashbuckled, but uh, at the same time, he was highly intelligent. Premier Ki fully supports the increasing U.S. combat commitment in South Vietnam. I think it's normal that when Vietnam, as a part of free world country, was attacked, uh, was attacked by communists, with the Chinese at that time and Russian behind them. So I think it's a duty of American to come for rescue. In February 1966, Key is invited to meet President Johnson. After the constant change of leadership, Key and his wife, Mai, provide an image of stability. As Key leaves Saigon, his priority is to get more economic aid. President Johnson enthusiastically agrees. He wants victory in what he calls the other war. In Hawaii, Johnson tells Key, we are here to talk peace. We are determined to win not only military victory, but victory over hunger, disease, and despair. Vietnam was poor. Vietnamese people are poor. So, of course, when half a million American soldiers were present in the soil of Vietnam, uh, they brought with us a living condition that compared to the, Viet the Vietnamese living conditions is so high, you know, so comfortable that uh, in many ways it corrupted. The South Vietnamese army is unaware it is surrounded and outnumbered two to one. The going at first is easy, deceptively so. But former Premier Nguyen Cao Ki says the mission is not aggressive enough. I was up there to inspect the field with my wife. And in the very first days of invasion, and the way that they carry the, the plan, I already, if remember well, I already said it will be a failure. And Mr. Teo at that time blamed me that uh, I am wrongly criticized. If you decide to go there to stop their supply line, and you have to go there and stay there. If we go to Chepon, even though we know that we, we cannot stay longer, but is it a point of honor to show to the communists that, that we can go to Japan? The U.S. military criticizes Arbin for not holding, but President Chu accuses the Americans of being the first to back off. Now, what, what went wrong is that they, after the, 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 the first week of operation, is that the Americans have suffered many casualties on pilot, helicopter pilots, and they reduce, and they reduce most totally the number of helicopter uh, use for the medical evacuation. That's the reason why the Vietnamese troops cannot advance further, because they are, uh, they have to take care of the, the wounded, you know, the, the, the dead, and that slow down the advance of Vietnamese troops deeper in Laotian territory, and that give advantage to the North Vietnamese troops to react. The Lam Sun operations was a failure because of planning, because 
the operation itself was unnecessary. If you send your troops to make an enclave to draw the communist troops and then destroy them, yes. But just to go there, you know, in that jungle area uh, for a promenade, you know, what for? What for? 100,000 South Vietnamese soldiers surrender after being left leaderless. Da Nang falls in only 32 hours. Former Premier Nguyen Cao Ki. Now, for that final debacle, I have to admit that it's our responsibilities. Or to be exact, I should say it's Mr. Tio's responsibilities. Bound me to it when it first started. Commanding officers ran first. In the Aiko area, Da Nang, commanding officers ran. Everywhere, commanding officers ran first. And all those commanding officers were appointed by Mr. Tio. That's the first time the morale of the army was affected. Not affected because they have been just overrun. Affected since two years. Because everyone understands that the military act has been cut. The economic act has been cut. There's many signs that America have abandoned us. Thousands gather to hear former Prime Minister Nguyen Cao Ki. He denounces his countrymen who have fled. Armed resistance can bring negotiations, he says. The best way is to hold the line in the military. Because if the collapse continue, disintegration continue, and then there's no need for negotiation. I landed on the Midway aircraft carrier and the admiral captain of the ship received me. And he left his office with his staff and just leave me alone. So I, I stood there for 15 or 25 minutes just crying by myself. I, I couldn't stop it. Even I, I said to myself, oh no, I'm a soldier. Never cry. But it happened. 